I believe it or not, your children, I mean, if you're breastfeeding, they're, they're gonna bite you. If you're new here, I'm your Christine. Welcome to my channel. If you're not new here, hey boo, I see you coming back. In my original video, my very first video that I ever uploaded on YouTube, I did mention that I did want to talk about some mom stuff. Today's actually going to be my first video about being a mom, and I know you guys have seen my girls, and you guys now know and love my girls, but let's talk about mom stuff. Specifically, we're going to be talking about 10 things that I changed my first breastfeeding journey to my second breastfeeding journey. And I'm going to let you in a little bit on how things went my first time and how they went my second time and just kind of let you guys know what I changed and what changed for me. So I don't know if the changes that I saw were because I actively made these changes or I don't know science. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing today. I didn't want to initially start my channel with a bunch of mom stuff because I didn't know how it was going to be received. I wanted to know my audience a little better. I wanted to know you guys a little better to see who was actually going to be viewing my channel. I know I do still have some guys out here struggling through it, still watching my channel. Thank you so much for coming back. I know this might not be the content that you're into, but I do think it's important if you have a wife or you plan to have a wife or a baby mother whatever to help her through her breastfeeding journey you really do need a lot of support and the more knowledgeable you are the more knowledge you both have and the better it is for the baby so if you don't have kids or you don't have a wife or a baby mother then this probably isn't your video don't worry there's plenty of other videos you can view on my channel something that sparks your interest if you are leaving if you don't have a baby mother or whatever don't forget to subscribe before you leave I promise it's not all mom content I try to watch out for my fellas on my channel channel too. As always, specifically you guys, if you have any ideas or something you'd want to see, always send them my way. I'm open to suggestions. So mamas or daddies, sit back and let's get started. Before you have kids, you don't know how serious the mom guilt and the mom trashing is. I don't know why it's like that, why people have so many comments about how you feed your kids and why you feed your kids, how you choose to feed them. I don't understand why so many other people have opinions on your children. Like, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I didn't make these children with you. So how are you commenting on them? I hate, I hate, I hate the fact that as moms, there's so much pressure on us, not only from ourselves because we are very hard on ourselves to do everything right, but from other moms around us who point their nose up at you if your child has chocolate on their face, their shoes are on the wrong feet, you know? Sometimes these things just happen. As moms, we are constantly always doing a million things at one time and sometimes we forget to wipe the chocolate off their face or sometimes we're rushing out the door and we forget to check that their shoes are on the wrong feet. I mean, it's just the way that the cookie crumbles. So I don't know. I just, I really hate that it's like that. So I know personally for me and my channel, I want to make this a safe space. I want to, you know, leave the comment section open for safe, forward, productive conversation. If you have any questions, always leave them in the comment section down below. Or if it's something more personal that you just want to ask me, you can always message me. I always have my socials posted down below as well as tagged in the video. Never feel like you can't reach out to me or anybody on my channel my community so far has been loving and kind and open and honest so I just want to put that out there before I start this video so with Liliana I knew I wanted to breastfeed but <laughs> as any first-time mom I didn't know what I had to know or I didn't know what I was supposed to know or what I was supposed to be doing you know my body is changing and I'm growing this human and it's really hard to prepare for what you're going to experience when you first start breastfeeding when there's no baby you know what I mean so with Liliana I felt like I couldn't really do anything like I felt like there wasn't anything for me to do until she got here. I of course did research in how production and things like that go, but I feel like nothing really happened until she got here. So my first initial experience trying to feed Liliana, it wasn't a good one. It wasn't positive. It wasn't reassuring at all, but I still thankfully didn't let that deter me from, you know, wanting to breastfeed her. My entire breastfeeding journey with Liliana, I didn't ever feel like I 
produced enough milk for her from the day we left the hospital we always supplemented her so after I would feed her then she would get formula after that until we thought she was full or until she was done eating so after I had the experience I had with Liliana I knew what to expect with Gamila I was still researching things as far as breastfeeding goes because I did only breastfeed Liliana for six months I knew what I needed to do as far as taking care of myself I did know how to tend to myself so I never had you know any of the issues my secret was coconut oil I would just religiously put coconut oil on after she was done eating and yeah I never had any kind of cracks or bleeding or anything like that of course it hurt but it wasn't anything that was super intolerable so I kind of knew what to expect when Gamila was born but not really because I feel like you know I tried my best with Liliana but I don't think it was as successful that I had hoped it would be so for Gamila my goal was to get her to a year with Liliana my goal was just you know we're gonna get to the next day and that's what we're gonna do you know we're gonna make it through this next feed we're gonna get through the next one we're gonna get through the next one and we just continue to do that and continue to do that until she was done but for Gamila I knew from the job I wanted to breastfeed her for a year so I was also still researching all the things that I could do for myself to get Gamila to the year that I knew I wanted to get her to I'm going to share with you guys the 10 things that I changed after breastfeeding Liliana while I was breastfeeding Gamila that worked for me so number one night feeds when we had came home from the hospital with Liliana Liliana has never been a good sleeper like never been a good sleeper she she just didn't sleep she would take cat naps and I asked the pediatrician like why doesn't she sleep and the pediatrician would tell me oh, you just have an active baby congratulations and I'm sitting there haven't slept in a week and I'm like gee thank you for that intellectual information so yeah Liliana didn't sleep but when I was in the hospital the nurse that I had and the doctor told me to wake her up while she was sleeping and feed her every three hours she had to be fed every two to three hours no matter what was happening she had to be fed every two to three hours and so I was like okay when I got home my mother-in-law and my mom both had told me well, why are you waking her up like she's never going to learn how to sleep through the night if you wake her up and I was like I mean, I don't know. That's just what they told me to do. So that's what I'm doing. I don't know how this works. So that's one thing that really changed and I think was really important and changing for us, for our mental state and our breastfeeding journey, honestly, is night feeds. So with Gamila, I never woke her up in the middle of the night. I, I just never disturbed her. If she was sleeping, I let her sleep and I would sleep until she was up and she was ready to eat. And then she would eat and then I would put her right back in her bassinet and she would go right back to sleep. She was such a good sleeper. She napped all day long, like the first month that we brought her home. It's like she wasn't even here because all she did was sleep. And it was just such a different journey than it was with Liliana. So that's one thing that I personally did oh let me also throw this in here disclaimer I'm not a medical professional this is just what I did for myself and my girls on my breastfeeding journey everybody's journey is their own everybody will experience something different everybody has to do things differently and I completely understand that your journey is your journey and I'm not here to take anything away from your journey or anything that you've learned on your journey this is just what's worked for me and my family so that's one thing that I did change with Gamila is her night feeds I did not wake her up I did not disturb her while she was sleeping I let her sleep and it did not affect my milk supply at all so because she slept my body was producing milk on the schedule that she was on so I didn't see any production problem as far as you know her getting what she needed because I wasn't waking her up my milk still came in just fine and you know things went accordingly so that's something that worked for me this might be an obvious one but number two is water so they tell you all the time drink water drink water drink water drink water like your body needs water your body needs water I mean, they, everybody tells you that even when you're not pregnant or even when you're not breastfeeding, they tell you your body needs water, but it is so important. With Liliana, I obviously would try to tell myself, okay, April, you're gonna drink this amount of water you have until this time to finish this amount of water, you have to keep drinking water. And still, I wouldn't. So with Camila, I had actually bought a Hydro Flask. I need a new one because mine's dingy and dirty, so I'm not gonna show it to you. But I bought a Hydro Flask with a straw on it and I just constantly kept it full and kept it next to me and I would just drink and drink and drink and drink and drink all day long. And it really made such a difference in the amount of milk that I produced. I mean, obviously they tell you these things for a reason. Your body needs water. Oh, 
just just drink water trust me get whatever bottle it is I know a hydro flasks are pricey but for me it was completely worth it I to have totally gotten my money's worth I have it with me literally everywhere I go every second of the day I have my water with me and it's just made it so much easier for me to make sure I'm getting the amount of water intake that I need to invest in something or don't invest in something just get something cheap that you it's easy for you to carry but it keeps the water the way that you like your water that's why I like my hydro flask because it kept my water super super cold which is how I like my water. The third thing that I changed when I was breastfeeding Camila was my breast pump. When I was breastfeeding Liliana, I used the Medela pump, and that was one that was free with my insurance, so that's the one that I had gotten. But with Camila, I had talked to some other moms and told them, I don't know what it is, but my body just doesn't produce milk with a pump. So when I'm feeding my babies, I know my babies are getting full because they're showing me all the signs that they're full, but when I pump, like I know that I have milk, I can feel that I have milk, and it just won't come out. Like the pump I'm using it just wouldn't come out when that was happening to me with Liliana I had just assumed that my body didn't respond well to it I didn't really know what was happening so with Gamila I had heard a lot of moms that they really liked the spectra pump and they didn't have these problems with the spectra pump so I got the spectra I think it's the two one mine is the blue one I just like the fact that it was chargeable and you could just take it without it being plugged into the wall which my Medela one had to be plugged into the wall I got the spectra pump and I absolutely loved it I didn't have problems I felt like I was empty every time I was done. I just really enjoyed that pump a lot. Also with Medela, I tried to change out the parts. I tried to find something that fit me better and it just never worked. So I feel like the pump that I had when I was breastfeeding Camila really made a world of a difference with my supply as far as being able to store it and have it for when we did leave her or I did go on vacation. So she was able to have plenty of milk here for her when I was gone. So that really helped me a lot. So check into the pumps if you know the one that you have isn't working for you. I actually actually bought two different pumps so I had the electric pump then I had also bought a manual pump just in case I didn't know what I was going to like if I couldn't get completely empty with one I would try another one so I had different options as far as a pump and I kind of learned what I liked that way the thing with the spectra is the second time I breastfed my insurance did not cover it so that we just paid for out of pocket but I think it was definitely worth the investment but number four on the same lines of pumping I bought a pumping bra with Liliana I had meant to and I was like oh, okay I'll get around to it I'll get around to it and I just never did because I didn't really like the way that the pump worked but once I was able to use the pump the right way and it was doing everything I needed to do I did get a pumping bra and it made such a difference especially when I had two babies I was able to you know pump and do what I needed to do while still changing diapers and I had my hands and it was just absolutely invest in a pumping bra I cannot stress this to you more if you're planning to pump or if you're you know or exclusively what is that called breastfeeding bottle feeding pumping I know there's a word for it. It's just not coming to me right now. April in editing. It's exclusively pumping. Why is that so hard? But if that's your journey because you do have to work and such then absolutely absolutely invest in a pumping bra number five I actually bought a bunch of vitamins before I started breastfeeding so I had bought fenugreek I had bought milk thistle or something like that I can't think of it at the top of my head but I'll pop in a picture here and I will also link them down below where I got them on Amazon because you already know I bought them on Amazon actually the second time I breastfed my doctor recommended that I stay on my prenatals which with Liliana I was never recommended that so with Camila I was taking the fenugreek the milk thistle and my prenatal every single morning I did that from the day that she was born so the day she was born in the hospital I had all my vitamins with me and I started those vitamins and my milk production was so good I did notice a big change in my milk supply again the water the vitamins all these things that I had changed I cannot contribute my success to breastfeeding gummy love with just one thing but I do really think that my vitamins helped me produce more milk than I was able to when I was with Liliana so it's just something to look into number six something that changed from my first to my second time breastfeeding is the pain that I felt so with Liliana it was obviously my first time breastfeeding and it was so painful the pain that you feel from breastfeeding is just such an inexplainable feeling it hurts after they're done it hurts when they're not even touching you like you don't want anybody to come near you because you're just so tender and in so much pain and it's just it's tough breastfeeding is so hard and that's why I say it's so important to have a good support system around you and people who know your goals and who are going to encourage you you know to meet those goals and push yourself but also will listen to you if you're really just tired and you're ready you know to throw in the towel there's nothing wrong 
wrong with doing that either. It is very hard and of course all we want is for our babies to be fed. That's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter how it happens or when or where it happens. It just matters that it happens. But the pain my second time around, I literally had no pain. Like. It maybe hurt the first week and then after that I didn't even, I mean, I didn't even think twice about it. it. It didn't hurt anymore. I never had any pain association with breastfeeding Camila. So yeah, it just really got a lot easier from, I guess, from breastfeeding Liliana and then, you know, breastfeeding Camila. My body was just used to what was happening so I didn't feel any pain anymore. So that was great. No complaints on that one. But another thing that I experienced with Camila that I didn't experience with Liliana is teething. I had only breastfed Liliana for six months and with Camila, we made it to like 11 and a half she'll be one in like two weeks oh yeah, so god you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they... she'll be one very soon <laughs> we actually made it to you know 11 and a half 12 months we'll round it out just so we say we got there but i was able to feed camila for her full first year and strangely enough we all know camila only has two bottom teeth she still only has two bottom teeth and she's going to be once i did go through the teething process with her but i feel like not as much as she should have like I feel like she definitely should have more teeth I should probably look into that now that I say that out loud but what had changed with those is I mean they bite you I believe it or not your children are, I mean if you're breastfeeding they're they're gonna bite you Camila actually though only bit me like twice maybe three times did she ever bite me it was never anything that I was of course I was nervous about it but after she had gotten her two teeth and she didn't ever like she already knew what she was supposed to do and she never tried to bite me anyway so it's just not something that we experienced together. That's not to say that your little one won't bite you. I'm just saying Camila didn't ever go through that. I didn't go through teething with Liliana so I didn't know what that was like or what to expect with that. But yeah with Camila teething was never really a problem. Sometimes she did want to feed more often just because she was in pain and you know she wanted to be comforted so I always let her feed whenever she wanted to to a reasonable extent. You know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Teething was a new experience that I had with Camila but it really didn't you know there's no story or tea behind it. It's just what happened. My next one is that I never used any kind of leaking pads and that was with my first one and my second one. The first time that I breastfed Liliana I just thought maybe I'm not leaking because I'm not producing enough milk and it really made me insecure as far as my production went. I wanted to make sure she was getting enough food and you know she was full but with Camila I still didn't leak and I know that Camila was full and healthy and you know she never had to be supplemented. I don't know my body I guess just doesn't leak but again I thought that's something that would change with my second time breastfeeding. I don't know if I'm just weird, but I've never had to use a pad for leaking. Like I've never once, both times I breastfed my babies, I've never leaked. And I just think, why? I don't understand. Like I know I'm supposed to, and I'm really, really, you know, appreciative that I don't have to deal with that, but why? Like I need answers. <laughs> So that's just something I didn't have to go through. That is one thing that didn't change at all between my journeys. Okay, number 10 and the last one I feel is so important. So if you don't do any of these things, if you don't drink your water, if you don't buy your vitamins, all those things, one thing that I do highly recommend is the app. So on my phone, I had an app, I think it's Baby Tracker. Yeah, I have like a, like a section of my phone dedicated to babies. I'll just pop in a video of what the app looks like on the phone. That way you guys can see it and download it if you'd like. But on it, it has to where you can track when your baby's eating and how long they ate, on which side they ate, because that's another thing that you go through as a breastfeeding mom. You can forget which side they fed on first and all that stuff is important to know. It just keeps everything organized and a nice place for you to put everything. So you can set a timer and when the timer goes off, it's time to feed baby. You can see how long the baby ate. So then when you go to doctor visits, then they ask you, well, how long is she eating on, on both sides and how many wet diapers, how many poopy diapers. It also has a place for you to track their output. It also has a place for you to track their sleep. So all of these things are really helpful for me because I was able to kind of keep track of our schedule a lot better. I'm very much of a scheduled person when it comes to my babies. So when my babies are small, I try to hurry up and put them on a schedule. That way it's easier for everybody to adjust, you know, having a new baby in the house. So this helped me so much keeping them on schedules. If you're curious my schedule was eat play sleep eat play sleep eat play sleep so baby would feed we would play I would try to keep baby up for a little while and then baby 
baby would sleep and that was just our routine over and over and over and over again and so that app really helped me track everything that was happening you can also track once baby starts solid you can also track what they're eating and that was helpful because if Amila did have an allergy or an outbreak I knew what she ate so I knew what she was allergic to so I highly recommend this app it really helped me my second time around on my breastfeeding journey I really wish I had it with Liliana but I don't know if I just didn't know about it or if it just wasn't around so I want to let you guys know that it's out there so you can go download it it is a free app it doesn't cost anything I do have an Apple so I know it's on Apple which means it should probably be on Android too I'm not sure how that works but yeah highly recommend this app that's all for today's video those were the 10 things that changed for me on my breastfeeding journey again if you have any questions or you want to see more videos like this absolutely let me know give this video a thumbs up if you do want to see more videos like this I don't know how this video will do on my channel it's the first of its kind but I definitely have a lot of other mom stuff if that's something you guys want to hear don't forget to subscribe before you leave hit the bell notification that way you get notified whenever I upload a new video if you don't hit the bell or you just simply don't know how don't worry I will always let you guys know when my videos go live on my socials these are my socials this is where you can find me on the internet I'll see you in my next video bye <laughs>